Kathy Taub is not only my sister, she is one of Manhattan's top selling real estate brokers, consistently ranking in the very top percentile of agents in the city, and in fact, the entire United States. If not, perhaps if my grandmother was still alive, she would probably say the world and maybe even the universe. Kathy, welcome. Thanks, Rob. So I have some notes here. We're going to be talking about presenting a property for sale, and Kathy is going to explain that to us. What, what does that entail, Kathy? Well, this is one of my favorite subjects because it's becoming incredibly important uh, in, in terms of how to present an apartment or a house in the best light to garner the most money for a seller. And it used to be that real estate brokers would, on a pitch or once they had a listing, advise the sellers to clean out the closets and declutter, depersonalize, remove all the photographs of their kids and parents and anything that would really suggest something very, very personal, uh, so as to enable a buyer coming into the home to envision themselves not in someone else's space, but how they might live in that space. And this uh, staging, we, we usually call it staging or presenting a property, has evolved into a very big business. And there are many levels of presenting a property. You can do it yourself if you don't want to upfront the expense or have a choice of many different levels of professionals who will do anything from construction work, removing old built-ins and fixing up an apartment uh, to painting and even wallpapering, furnishing, including removing all of someone's furniture and replacing with new, more current furniture. Well, for, I have a question right away then about this. Because sure. What, what price point does this start at? Where does this become efficacious? I mean, if you have a little one-bedroom apartment, are you going to do this? Well, in Manhattan, little one-bedroom apartments are selling anywhere from 500000 to a million and a half to $2 million. So I would argue that it almost always pays to stage unless, of course, you're selling a new development, uh, a property that's just recently been uh, newly finished. But at uh, various levels, there's always something to do. And the so question is- So exponentially, how much can it, can it matter in terms of how much the sale price can differentiate if you fix a place up? Sure, now that's, that's the, the major question because you wanna make sure if you're spending a lot of money that it comes back to you. And what we always know in real estate is the faster an apartment or house sells, typically the higher the price that the seller will get for that property. And what staging does is creates an environment that is very inviting. And when a buyer walks in, that first impression is so important. And what we want is to encourage buyers to bid early on because that's when the seller's more likely to realize their asking price or something very close to it or even something over it. So I've heard statistics that suggest that a property will sell for 15% higher in 30% less time if it's professionally staged. Now that's fascinating to me because I've seen a wide range of apartments and I was just talking to our producer, Tony Simone, about this earlier this morning. There are people that take a bizarre pride and ownership of their homes and see them differently than other people do. And... How do you convince them that they have to change their place or stage it? I think that would be the key thing. And uh, you're as diplomatic as Dag Hammarskjöld. Some of us aren't. <laughs> really, so, that, I'm very serious. How do, how do you no, do this? And, and, and your point is well taken because a lot of people think, and many people, most sellers think that they've got the Taj Mahal when in fact it might uh, be anything but that. And so what you really need to do as an effective real estate broker is to take the ego out of it and show either with statistics or with articles of which there are many, why it's important to neutralize an environment. And sometimes that doesn't happen right off the bat. Someone might like their Louis Couture's furniture or very heavy draperies, and maybe it takes a couple, mo 
couple of months on the market and consistent feedback from buyers to convince them that they need to take action. So when they say, Miss Tao, but everyone loves my rhinoceros head above the fireplace, they find it very dramatic. You have to say, well, but statistics show. Well, that's when the psychologist in, in us and in me comes out, of course. You need to be delicate with certain people. And then other people don't have such fragile egos. I mean, remember what, what they are trying to do and what my goal is to convince them is that they, this is typically the most important asset that someone has to sell, their, their apartment or townhouse, their co-op or condo in Manhattan, or New York City. And in order to maximize value, there's plenty of information to support the fact that you need to neutralize an environment and make it inviting to as wide a range of, of a buyer as possible. And if something is very, if an apartment is very specific in style, that typically is a bad thing in terms of marketing. What if you have somebody that's a hoarder? How do you get them to get the stuff out of there? I'm going to refer that person on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not dealing Tony, with hoarders. I'm not dealing to, with Tony, are you listening to this? In the, there's a in difference the between room? there's a difference between hoarding, of course, and decluttering. So. Uh, Kathy, you're just very diplomatic. I should have said, what if someone's home is filled with a tremendous amount of clutter, like mine? You know, my personality is to be pretty direct. So while I try to I be respectful of, of, of someone's space, I also am, you know, I'm there to do my job effectively. And I need to convince a seller that, and most of them are, are you know, most people are pretty savvy and, and they've read uh, a lot of articles and are... are you know, they've seen uh, real estate shows on, on television, and they understand the importance of, of, a, of a good presentation. The hardest thing I find is when someone is going to uh, professionally stage an apartment is to have that big upfront expense and to convince them that that's going to come back to them. Can you give us an idea of how this changes financially uh, from a one-bedroom to a two or square footage-wise? What kind of expenses starts preliminarily sure. at, at staging? And where, well, where, what's the, the low and the high? You know, stagers, if you're working with a professional, just to come into a space, they need to have a certain amount. Uh, they need to have a certain fee that's going to make it worthwhile for them to move in their furnishings and move out certain furnishings and to paint. And so I think if you're looking at... You know, I just had a, a one bedroom staged and it was completely transformed and it looks amazing and I'm really, really excited about it. And that staging for about a 1,000 square foot apartment, which was completely empty, was in the, uh, the budget was in the range of uh, $11,000, I believe. And that included artwork. And what was and the price of the apartment, sale price? The sale price of the apartment is $2.1 million. And the big difference there, though, is that the apartment was in a state that was very unpresentable before the staging and the staging completely transformed it. So when buyers walk into this apartment, they get really excited versus looking at it and saying, I have so much work to do this. And, and that kind of impression can be changed just with removal of, of old window treatments and cleaning windows and refreshing with paint, which is very, very basic. Uh, painting is the least expensive fix and it's the most effective fi fix. And the apartment was staged with very contemporary furnishings and just looked like the kind of space where someone would would love to, to move into. Even then, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but then what about virtual staging and what are the pros and cons of that? Well, remember that the first look that most buyers have of a space is online. So the other very important aspect of staging is professional photography. And so the staging of, of, uh, enables us to take great pictures and show them online. Now with virtual staging, it, that is, if someone doesn't want to invest in real staging, it's the next best step, but I think it's a poor cousin because it looks a little bit fake online. And then when someone actually walks into the space, inevitably they're disappointed because it's not, that's a virtual staging. So they're actually going to see the real space, which is probably not going to look particularly good. So I'm always an advocate of doing an actual staging. Well, Kathy, this was very informative, and I know that you're right because you don't get to be as rich, famous, and successful as <laughs> Kathy Taub without being right 99.9% .9 of the time. C. Taub at stribling.com. That's C-T-A-U-B at S-T-R-I-B-L-I-N-G dot com. 
Just Google Kathy Taub and all kinds of fascinating information comes up about her. She is one of the top brokers in the country, if not the world, and certainly in New York City. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Rob.